Welcome to this short video for parents on an addition activity for your children. The aim of this video is to help support general mathematics skills. The purpose is for your son or daughter to practice their non-calculator addition skills and, if they want to, an opportunity to explore mathematics beyond the initial number pyramids. This video will help guide you through the number pyramid activity so that you can support your son or daughter practice the addition skills they have been taught at school. The activity is using number pyramids which are very easy to sketch out on paper and need very little preparation. So all you need are pens, paper and a calculator to check answers from time to time. For younger children you may well just want to help them practice their pen and paper or mental addition skills but for older children there are suggestions on how to increase the challenge and also explore the algebraic structure. Don't worry about the algebra, they can always check this out with their friends or a teacher. Addition. You can see here some different ways of how to add two numbers such as 37 and 24, which can be done as a mental calculation or using pen and paper. Your son or daughter will be familiar with these methods or other ones that they have been taught at school. The traditional method is shown at the bottom left, where you are probably used to the numbers being arranged in columns, hundreds, tens, and units in the right hand column. Don't be worried if your son or daughter refers to this as the ones column as this is the standard name now. Let's have a look at the number pyramids we're going to use in this video as a way of practicing addition skills. You can see here we have a three step pyramid on the screen and the key fact for all of the number pyramid work we're going to do is that the numbers in the bottom, the ones we're going to choose, have to be consecutive. So in my example here, I have five, six, and seven, three consecutive numbers along the base of the pyramid. Now, the aim of all the number pyramids is to work out the final answer at the very top as well, which I've highlighted in yellow. So what do we do next? Well, each number pyramid works the same way. You look at two numbers underneath a block that's higher and you add those together to find the answer in that box. So in this case, 5 plus 6 is 11. Moving along, we now have 6 and 7 underneath the other middle block and they will give us that answer. So adding 6 and 7 together gives us 13. Likewise, now we're moving to find out the final answer on the top, 11 and 13 are the two numbers that add up to give us the final answer. So 11 plus 13 is 24. And in this case, the final answer for this three-step pyramid is 24. If we have a look at another example, some different numbers this time. Remember, they have to be consecutive on the bottom row. So let's try 27, 28 and 29. Just as before, we want to find the number at the very top of the pyramid in the yellow box. So 27 and 28 have to be added together to give the answer to the box above them. 27 and 28 is 55 in this case. And similarly, 28 and 29 have to be added together to give the answer in the box above them. And 28 plus 29 is 57. Moving up a row, now we know that 55 and 57 have to add together to give us the final answer. And 55 plus 57 is 112. And that's how the number pyramids work. And it is just involving addition each time. And some of that addition can be done as a mental exercise and some of it by using a paper and pen method to work out the next number up. So uh, here are the two pyramids we've just looked at. And let's just have a look at the left hand one first. And there's something we can notice here, perhaps it's going on with the maths. If we look at the centre number on the left hand one, which is six, and the final answer is 24, we can sort of notice that six times four is 24. Now that would be quite neat if we could get straight to the answer from the middle number on the bottom. And I wonder if it's true on the other one we did as an example a second ago. Let's have a look. 28 is the middle number, 112 the one at the top, the final answer, and 28 times 4 is 112. 
So this appears to work. Now this could be really useful and it could be an interesting fact about these three step number pyramids, but it's always useful just to try it out once more. So let's have a look at another example. Here's a new three step pyramid. This time let's just put some slightly larger numbers in. Don't forget they have to be consecutive. So 100, 101, 102. 101 is the number at the bottom and following our rule we've just looked at, then to get the number at the top, it should be times by four. So 101 times four is 404. So let's just stick the number we think is the answer at the top. If we go back to how these have been worked out before, 100 plus 101 is 201, which should give us the answer in that box. And to the right of that, 101 plus 102 will be 203, which would be answer in the other middle box. Finally, 201 plus 203 is in fact 404. So this rule of multiplying by four looks like it works. The three step pyramid clearly has a rule then of multiplying by four from the middle at the bottom to get the answer at the top. To save a bit of time, there's similar rules as well. So if we look at a five step pyramid to get from the center number to the final answer at the top, you would multiply by 16. And in fact, if you had a seven step pyramid to get from the center number to the final answer at the top, you would multiply by 64. Summarising these rules on how to find the answer at the top of a number pyramid from the centre number at the bottom, uh, the three step pyramid, you would multiply that by four to get the final answer. On a five step pyramid, you would multiply by 16. On a seven step pyramid, you would multiply by 64. And just for fun, on a nine step pyramid, you'd multiply by 256. So there's variety of ways you can use this information. You could let your son or daughter know these facts at the beginning so that they could check their addition answers and then see where they'd gone wrong if they'd made an error or be very happy they'd got the answer right. You could keep them to yourself and use that as a way of checking their final answers to help them. Or if you wanted to, you could demonstrate your magic math skills in that you could work the final answer out a lot quicker using a calculator in this rule before they'd finished the number grid. It might be that for your son and daughter, the number pyramids described previously are perfectly fine for practice at addition and they can be extended slightly by larger numbers or as pointed out, more stepped pyramids, five step or a seven step or even a nine step pyramid. If your son and daughter are interested in a further challenge, the next three examples uh, will show some other ways of using the number pyramids that just can extend them a little further. Firstly, do these rules in number pyramids work for any sequence of numbers? For instance, 9, 13 and 17 on the bottom row is a sequence where it's going up by four each time. What about negative numbers? decimals, or indeed fractions. Plenty of other number sequences where your son or daughter could explore three-step and five-step number pyramids and whether the rules still work. If you'd like a little extra challenge for your son or daughter, then is there a rule when the base of the pyramid has an even number of boxes. So the sort of pyramid I'm talking about is one like that. That would be a four step pyramid. And you can see the consecutive numbers at the bottom, five, six, seven, and eight this time, there are four boxes, an even number of boxes. Can they find a rule from getting from the bottom row to the final answer in a situation like that? There's a possible extra challenge you could set your son or daughter. Or if, like most maths teachers, you love algebra and your son and daughter are feeling confident that they'd like to explore the algebra, you could 
show them this and sort of get them going on how to look at the algebra in the three step pyramid. So as with all the other ones with numbers, you add the two boxes together to get the one above it. So n plus n plus one would give us 2n plus one in the box there. So there's a, a quick example on how to go about filling in this particular number pyramid. And the question you'd be asking is, does it actually back up the rule? Can you see in the algebra that it shows that you multiply the middle box by four to get the final answer? Similarly, by looking at an algebraic version of the five and seven step pyramids, can you also explain how those rules work with the algebra as well? In summary, to prepare, make sure you've got some paper, pens and a calculator, of course, to check answers as we go along. You might like to create some blank number pyramids to use. Check that your son or daughter are happy with the addition method they like using. I'd recommend starting with a simple one like the one at the beginning I used to establish the principles of how the pyramids work. But also don't forget about the challenge for your son or daughter as they go along. If you wanted to, you can do this by having larger numbers in the first layer of the pyramid. You could have pyramids with more steps like the five step or the seven step pyramid. You could introduce negative numbers or decimals or fractions. And also, if your son and daughter is particularly keen, they could have a look at the algebra too. And finally, I'd just like to say thank you for listening and I hope you found this video useful.